Hello, fellow Democrats. Hello. Man, I love coming down to the Bell House. I mean, you guys just really have so much energy, and it really invigorates me to go back out and continue to fight. Because I got to tell you, it's hard being a Democrat door sometimes. It really is because we've got a uh, General Assembly that's all on the other team, the governor's all on the other team. Most of our congressional delegation is all on the other team. Our our congressman is on the other team. Now the president is on the other team. Him. Um, <laughs> so I'm, but you know, I'm not going to talk about the president. Uh, I'm just going to talk about. I'm going to talk real quickly about myself. And I do have an ask at the end. I'm going to lay out a few things. And if by the end you like what you hear, then by all means you can give what I'm going to ask you. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm from Macon, Georgia, uh, which is another one of these divided counties, because gerrymandering, right? Uh, it's between the 2nd and the 8th, and I sit right in the 8th. So yeah, the 8th the comes down from Monroe and Jones counties, comes down to catch the top part of it to get the North Bid Republicans, then comes back around to catch uh, Houston, then comes all the way down here to, here to y'all. And I'm in there a little bit. Um, I'm married with two kids. I currently work for an insurance company as a computer programmer. So, solid working class roots. Um, I'm also a member of the Democratic Party of Georgia. I am the 8th Congressional District Chair for the Democratic Party of Georgia. So, for the past four years, I have been learning all about not just my county, but all of the counties throughout the 8th Congressional District. That job is a lot like what Sarah's is. Sarah's actually kind of like my boss in the, uh, in the party structure, except she has all the counties and all the districts, whereas I have just my district and the counties in my district. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm not new to politics, but if I run, I will be new to being a candidate. And so I want to make certain that you understand that I'm not some state representative or state senator or city council person or county commissioner or any other ways, normal ways people come up through the ranks. I'm making a stab at this position basically from my first, this is my first time running for office. So I want to talk to you about a few things that I believe that we should be running, if we, when we run a candidate, we should be running a candidate on to be thinking about. Number one thing, health care. Number one thing, because it's the number one thing in the news, the Republicans have made it number one thing, they're going to vote 50 times to repeal the Affordable Care Act when there was no chance it was going anywhere, and now they've had a chance to get rid of it, now they're fumbling the football, they don't really have a plan, every plan they've got is terrible. So, if they don't get rid of it, by the time I'm able to be elected, I will fight to keep the Affordable Care Act, keep Obama's legacy intact, because they bound and determined to destroy every essence that man ever existed. But I don't think it will. You know, so they're kind of pessimistic about it. They've really got, they, they've really got an animus they're going to get rid of it. So, if they're able to succeed, and by the time I'm able to be elected uh, come next year, it's gone by the time I get to Congress, I want to fight for Medicare for all. Our district, we can convince people that the old way didn't work, the new way worked for some, not for everybody, the new new way is working for fewer people, and it's only really a big tax break. I want to call it wealth care. It's a big tax break for for people in the guise of health care. Well, let's just make sure we take care of every man, woman, and child in our nation, period. We can do it. They keep saying, how are you going to pay for it? How do we pay for two wars? How do we pay to drop the mother of all bombs in Afghanistan? How do we pay for all these corporate tax breaks? How do we pay for all these things that aren't taking care of our people? 
We're the rich. We're not the richest, most powerful nation in the free world. We're not the richest, most powerful nation in the world. We're the richest, most powerful nation in the history of the world, and we still can't get this right. So I'm a little work up about it. I'm sorry, guys, but I want to get this right, and that's what I want to. That's what I'm, the number one concern I want to work on. Second priority, obviously, is jobs. The, but the problem with working for is jobs is that there are so many places in rural Georgia, and the 8th is very largely rural, that just aren't ready to take on many of the big jobs that are coming in the 21st century. They don't have the basic infrastructure, which means that we really need to focus on a huge infrastructure investment. Sarah talked about how FDR brought electricity to rural areas. Well, now it's time for us to not only repair the roads, repair the bridges that are way overdue, bring traffic back down some old highways and byways that haven't seen somewhere in a long time. It's now time to upgrade the electrical grid, make it ready for 21st century power resources that Claudia will tell you, uh, be happy to tell you all about. And it's time to expand broadband internet access to rural Georgia. All we're going to hear about is what's the spending? This is spending. This is spending. No, it's investing. And it's doubling down on us. I'm tired of sending all of our money off to millionaires and millionaires in the form of tax cuts and defense contractors when we don't take care of our people. We don't take care of the basic needs of our people and ensure that our communities have the things that they need in order to prosper and do well. Speaking of defense, speaking, we've got, this is a big defense city. You look at the, um, if you ever look at a bar chart of our budget, the, the defense budget will look like this. But then the VA, the whole VA, will look like this. We can spend this much making veterans, but we're only going to spend this much taking care of veterans. We can do better. We need to do better. We have a, it's a moral imperative that we do better. So those are the things that, those are the main things I want to focus on. There are tons of other things. When you're a Democrat, you have to focus on everything. The environment, like the environment, and immigration. Because you've got to fix everything, you've got to take care of everything. Because guess what? You can't just say, well, let's just lower taxes and let the free market take care of it. Because, you know, I'm telling you, the other team, they're playing politics on easy mode. Meanwhile, we're actually trying to take care of people. But these, if we take care of these things, we can then reach out and build our economy out and be much stronger and much more self-reliant as individual communities. So I told you what I was about. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. Let me, I just want to give you the ask. I've been invited to a national candidate training by the, by the Progressive Change Campaign Committee in Washington, D.C. This is a, a four-day training which is going to teach me, a brand new candidate, everything about it's a big, big um, boot camp on being a candidate and on running a successful, progressive, grassroots campaign. The training itself is free, but I do need to be able to have lodging and transportation in D.C. And that's where I'd like your help. I have a Facebook page for my campaign, uh, www.fred.com, www.facebook.com slash Fred Swamp for Congress. And on there, you will find a GoFundMe where I've set up trying to take in some donations to defray those costs. If you would like to help support a candidate, and looking around this room, if everybody gave $10, that would be a huge boost to my candidacy and my campaign. If, if you want to help a candidate who believes in things that I've stated, 
please check that out. Look into it. Please give. Please share on your social media. Please let your friends who are interested know. And that way, then we can create a candidate, a candidacy, and a campaign that is going to bring progressive values to Lowndes County and to the 8th District. One last thing. I've spoken to some of you. This is my card. If I have not spoken to you, shook your hand, and handed you a card, do not let me leave this room without doing so. You come find me and, and, and grab me and, and say, hey, I'm interested in, in hearing more about what you have to say. If you have any questions as well about me or my campaign, that's a great time to do it. I don't want to take any more of your time. Thank you so much for talking.